Benjamin, please introduce yourself for um, the viewer and, and uh, talk maybe about your role and what brought you here. Sure. Um, I'm Benjamin Liu. I teach law at the University of Auckland. And, uh, well, basically, artificial intelligence and law is one of my research areas. And I found this um, uh, a few years ago, I bumped into, I was reading a news, uh, news story about deep learning and I got so excited because I thought now finally the level of artificial intelligence or the level of te technology can be really used to address the legal issues. And since then I have been looking into uh, the field of AI and the law and the policy. And in fact, uh, starting this year, I designed and taught a master level course of AI and the law and the policy. And the reason why I, why I do that is because, well, basically for two reasons. One is I think that nowadays the world is changing, the legal profession is changing, the legal education also needs to change to prepare students for the changing world. And for law school students, if, we want, if they want to be good lawyers, not only they need to understand law, but also they need to understand the technology, how to use the technology, and how the technology is going to affect the legal profession. The second reason why I designed this course is because I believe that artificial intelligence is going to bring a whole list of new legal and policy issues, being you know, the decision making by AI or robot, uh, autonomous cars, or privacy issues, data protection, all sorts of issues. And in fact, the very existence of AI could even challenge our concept of law. And that may become uh, a real issue once we have very sophisticated AI systems, which in a sense govern our daily lives. I mean, previously it's law governing how human behaves, but nowadays if we go on Facebook, we do Google search, etc., etc., a lot of things actually are governed by the computer algorithms. So how we address those issues? I think those are the big, big question for lawyers, for legal researchers, and also for the policymakers. It strikes me as very interesting because you know Herbert Hart's theory uh, in the concept of law is all about you know this idea that that, that fundamentally social norms dictate how we organize our, ourselves legally, and that really you know law is a social construct. And obviously the role of AI in in transforming that social construct and actually. Um, you know, changing the way that, um, as you say, we, we behave given the, you know, the new applications available to us will, will mean that, uh, yeah, the legal system fundamentally changes. Do, do you have any comments on what, um, you know, what, what we should be, um, you know, as younger, as law students, what we should be thinking about in this area? Uh, is, there, is there, you know, would you, would you highlight anything as um, being particularly important for us to think about in terms of ethical issues or policy issues? Um, not to not to go over your whole master's syllabus, but is there is there something that you would you would say to us is important to look at? Uh, to me, uh, from a more practical perspective, I think there are two areas of law which could be uh, very much affected by AI. One is the privacy issue. I mean, nowadays we have so many devices, and our data, personal data, is being sent back to the devices providers all the time. All those things are going to create AI issues. And in fact, I don't know whether you know this, uh, last year uh, in Europe, the European, uh, in EU, they passed a regulation called uh, General Data Protection Regulation. And in that regulation, there are a couple of interesting points. One is that they actually allow people to have a right to explanation. That is, if a decision is made by AI, then the people who are being subject to the decision can challenge that decision, can ask for explanation. And you know, from our discussion today, it becomes, it is quite clear that sometimes the AI decision making process is a bit of like a black box. The, the AI cannot provide a human understandable explanation to us. So how do we solve that problem? So I think this is, this is gonna be one very interesting and yet important area. And how do we uh, make sure that the decisions made by AI will not um, uh, discriminate certain group of people. How do we make that decision? How do we look into the data set to make sure that will not happen? All those things will be important for the young lawyers. It reminds me of Wisconsin and Loomis. 
and this idea that you know he raised arguments that possibly by you know uh, hiding the actual algorithm there were there were due process issues um, and I, I agree with you that it's fundamentally important do you, do you so obviously today it hasn't um, you know gone into that kind of depth but, but what what is the importance of an event like today for um, you know for for making sure that we're addressing some of those questions I think the, the importance of today's event is that uh, is to raise awareness I mean today I mean people sitting here actually we are in a sense, we are already the converted group. We know how important AI is, or how fundamental the impact of AI is going to have on the legal profession and also the society as a whole. But in terms of the wider community, uh, probably the understanding is not there yet. And in fact, I mean, there is a common myth that for the younger generations, probably they, because um, they, they are more familiar with the digital devices, uh, they will be more used to uh, using AI technologies. But from my personal observation, like sometimes when I ask my students whether how much they know AI, how much they know machine learning, the answer is not much. But particularly on that, actually, more from educators' perspective, I think we have urgent task to prepare our next generation to be to be more uh, knowledgeable in this area, to know what AI is and what what AI can do. Um, in fact, if we look at the, 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 the government policy, the Chinese government just published their five-year uh, plan. And one of the items uh, in the plan is to make sure that uh, in a few years' time, all high schools are going to teach AI course. And I think probably our governments should, I mean, uh, we should also think about something similar to make sure that our generation, the younger generation do not lag behind. I think that's an extremely interesting point. And, and so obviously you've come you know, across the aisle, so to speak, from um, New Zealand, I believe. Yes. And uh, could, could you talk about maybe um, you know, wh wh why, why you would travel um, internationally? Obviously, Australia is basically just across the way. But yeah. um, clearly, um, this event is where, in a sense, um, or was important for you to, to go to. And, and um, I just wanted to, to ask whether it has anything to do with some of the people in the room, because there's so many interesting people, and, and whether you've had a chance to meet anyone yet or... Yes, actually, definitely, because uh, uh, when I was looking at, uh, before I decided to, uh, to attend this event, I was looking at the, ag uh, the, the agenda, and uh, the names uh, very much attracted, uh, a very much important factor, because uh, I think in terms of this kind of events, we need to have people who first really understand what AI is, and also understand how AI is being used in the legal profession. And those people, and th th those people particularly, in that they, they have their own startups, or they are involved in getting the technology from the provider to the law firms. They understand not only just how the technology works, but also how, what are the potential challenges if you do implement the technology in a real environment. And that is kind of insights or the knowledge I'm very much interested in getting. Uh, and do, do you think, you know, back to one of your earlier comments that, um, you know, law, your, your law students in this program, as much as they're digitally literate, they mightn't understand what AI actually is. Do you, do you think part of the problem is that, you know, there's a bit of a um, uh, sort of irrational exuberance about certain things because people are trying to sell products and there becomes a bit of confusion around what the term actually means? And um, I was wondering whether you could comment on that and whether... You know, you you feel that today has been good at getting to the heart of what we're actually talking about. Um, and sorry to load another question in there, but whether you, as someone who's an expert, could could explain um, to the to the viewers what artificial intelligence actually is. Uh, <laughs> sorry, lots of questions. <laughs> no, I have to uh, put up a disclaimer first. Uh, I'm in no way an AI expert, but I am interested in AI and the law because because of my legal background and also because I'm quite interested in this area. And uh, to me, sometimes um, I, the feeling I get from my, my students is that uh, it's a bit like similar to the, to the understanding of the general public. Whenever people talk about AI, the first picture which comes to their mind probably is a, a picture of Terminator. But that actually is not what truly AI is. And in fact, if we look at the certain technologies we are already using in, the today, in today's legal profession or other professions, um, they are, in a sense, not really that kind of sophisticated software. However, 
they can greatly help or improve the efficiency of the things we do or of our work. I think that is the real, real value of the AI software, at least for now. And that's what we, the message we, we should convey to the general public. On the one hand, we shouldn't get too excited about what AI can do. On the other hand, we do need to realize that even as of today, the technology of AI can greatly help uh, improve our work. That's excellent. Thank you so much. And I maybe just, um, you know, a final, a final um, uh, re recap on on what on on one insight that you've taken away um, from today. If any stand out. Wow, it's difficult to say because there, there were so many uh, interesting points and important points. Um, one point I think uh, one of the panelists emphasized is that the the, the important thing about um, coding moral values into AI systems. And I was surprised to, to know that, uh, I remember one of the other panelists said that when, when a software is being promoted to a company and uh, the client or the user asks those developers, how have, have you considered the moral rules or the moral values, or have you considered putting those moral values into the software? And the answer from the developer is, what moral values? We simply give a policy or objective to the software and the software is going to do what it's told to do. So that actually struck me because uh, the way I see it, uh, moral values or legal rules are absolutely important when we build more and more sophisticated systems because those systems are going to affect the people's lives. And if we don't get it right, if we simply leave uh, those important things to, uh, to one sector without the deep involvement of the legal profession, we're going to be in trouble.